Welcome everyone. I hope everyone is doing well. I wanted to do a year-end review for Cardano. 2019 Cardano. I made a video at the end of 2018 saying that 2019 was the year of Cardano. We missed some marks, but we scored big in other fields. Although we did not accomplish everything that I set out in that video, meaning smart contracts, the launch of smart contracts, the launch of mainnet staking, this is right around the corner. We are starting the testnet staking later this month. Smart contracts will be released sometime next year and governance should be, we should expect governance towards the end of 2020, maybe the beginning of 2021. But there are a lot of features that still haven't hit the Cardano ecosystem, but there are well over 100 developers that are working and committing commits to the Cardano project, whether that be on Emergo or IOHK. This is very interesting because in the cryptocurrency community, people like to badmouth projects, people may have biases towards certain projects, but there are not a lot of projects that are actually doing anything. And Cardano, I could tell you that they are moving forward. You have to check the GitHub. You have to check all the accomplishments that the project has set forward this year. And we had Nathan Kaiser on the Cardano Effect podcast, and he said something very important. We're on the bleeding edge of the bleeding edge of technology, meaning that there's no guide. There's no rule book about how to create this. There's no owner's manual. We're literally creating the owner's manual as we go forward. So some things break and those breaks are fixed and ultimately they're added to the Cardano owner's manual. But there's no guide to tell us where to go. We dream big and we hit some and we miss some. But at the end of the day, the project is still progressing forward. So whatever biases you have against the project, that's on you. It's still moving forward. There are still employees that are working diligently and as hard as possible to get that code out and move the project forward. So I'm going to start this video today by s talking about some of the biggest hits of Cardano in 2019. I went through a lot of data, I went through the IOHK Twitter, the Emergo Twitter, the Cardano Foundation Twitter, and these are some of the events that I thought were the biggest of the year. You could have other events that you thought were big. Please drop them in the comment section below. But I'm going to go over them quickly and you let me know what you think about these events. Ultimately, I picked these events because I think that they're net positives for Cardano and that comes in the form of adoption, utility, and maybe future price. All these events that I list today, I think will positively affect Cardano in the future. Just like you're laying seeds for your investment in cryptocurrency, Cardano is laying those seeds for them to sprout and flourish in the future. And it's the steps that they take today that you'll see in three to five years. So moving forward, I think that Cardano is, you know, they missed their marks, they missed some of their marks, but at the end of the day, they're doing a lot and they are one of the most advanced crypto projects out there, whether you like it or not. It is what it is. So in January, the first big event was that the Cardano roadmap had been updated. So the Cardano roadmap previously was on the IOHK website, and it was a guide as to what features are going to be added within Cardano. There was a 30-day ticker as to when the next updates would be released. That was removed. That was deprecated. And it's more of a guideline for each of the eras within the Cardano project. Right now, the two eras that are being worked on, well, I think there are probably multiple different eras that are being worked on now, but we're working on Shelly and we're working on Gogan. Shelly is the staking layer and Gogan is the smart contract layer. But if you check the roadmap, there are also lots of different features that are added into these layers. So it's just not staking, it's multi-sig. It's a lot of different features that are going to secure and ultimately increase the speed of the protocol and provide a more fluid ecosystem. So that was great. The next thing was in January, they launched the Cardano Ambassador Program. I started this YouTube channel, I think, I don't know, a year and a half ago, maybe more now. I don't know. But I did this way before I had any knowledge of an ambassador program. And since then, there have been a lot of new ambassadors that have contributed and created content and allowed information to propagate to as many different communities as possible. And it's been great. They added a moderator section, a content creator section, and a current translator section. 
So there are a lot of people moderating groups, translating into various different languages, and creating content, which is always wonderful. The, also, the interesting thing is that most of these content creators, or not all of them, you know, they're doing it because they truly love the project. There's no real financial incentive to become a Cardano ambassador other than trying to commit to the ecosystem and put in and build a community. Long term, who knows what will happen. The next thing was the Yodoi wallet. It was available for Android. So that was big because I have a Samsung Galaxy. And the minute it was available for Android, I downloaded Yodoi Mobile for Android. And it was a pretty cool experience. Very cool experience. So in February... We had the Clio.one educational hub. Marcus and Robert launched a website with a Plutus smart contract course for people to create their first smart contract. So it's a series of lessons and tutorials that allow people to understand exactly what Plutus is and what they can do within Plutus. So I thought that was good. Also in February, a notable achievement was the D-Lab the first investments for the D-Lab. And that was an initiative by Emergo. So they're more like the venture capitalist firm the venture capitalist arm of the Cardano project. They invested in four projects, I believe Helixworks, Sempo, Tesseract, and Cadillac. So they invested, I think, about $200,000, and it was a 14-week program. We had one of the guys on the Cardano Effect podcast, the Tesseract guys, but we didn't have the other guys. So I'm interested to see, I'm interested to see how these these companies flourish in the future. I know that there are a lot more companies that want to build within this project. And it's still so early. Smart contracts haven't even been released to the main net yet. So it would be interesting to see moving forward. The next thing was that the Yodoi wallet was launched for iOS. So this is following the Android launch. So people could download the Yodoi mobile app for their iPhone. The next thing, in March, Emergo launched their new website. They relaunched their website, which is always good marketing and branding, especially for the firm that is responsible for investing in different companies and bringing in different companies within this project. We also had the Cardano 1.5 release, which was the last release in the Byron phase. I also wanted to shout out the French podcast started by Quentin and Robin I believe Quentin is just the I believe Quentin is just the host now but si tu parles français tu veux regarder ça tu peux aller à Cardano podcast français So great job Quentin thank you Then we had the IOHK Symphony of Blockchain so this was this whole interactive experience that used that used augmented reality I mean, they had Oculus Rifts and they were visualizing the Bitcoin blockchain. In the future, I hope that IOHK doesn't spend any more money on visualizing the, the, the Bitcoin blockchain. Although I understand the aesthetic, aesthetically pleasing nature of it and trying to disseminate this information to the masses, I hope that we can visualize the Cardano blockchain in the future and all future augmented reality projects are specifically tailored towards the Cardano project. No need to waste any money on the Bitcoin blockchain. No hate, no shade, I'm just saying. So next is the completion of the Haskell course in Ethiopia. There were 23 students, 19 Ethiopians, four Ugandans, all women. They were taking a Haskell class. The last course was taught by Philip Wadler. The main courses were taught by Lars Brunyes and Polina Vinogradova. So they taught the course for that period of time. The, the girls graduated. We had a special Cardano Effect episode where we didn't interview the girls, but we interviewed Polina and Lars, and they talked all about their course. That was wonderful. Then Cardano gained ledger support. So this was in Yodoi only. It hasn't come to Daedalus yet, but it should in the future. So if you had this ledger Nano OS, you could automatically put your... ADA into a ledger supported Yodoi address. So that was wonderful. Towards the middle part of the year, I think April, we had the IOHK summit. I went to the IOHK summit, a lot of different speakers, lots going on. It was a grand, it was a, it was a grand production. It was a grand production. There were a lot of people there. We had also Marcus and Robert. Uh, they, they demonstrated the rock pie project. So I went to that little talk and it's this whole initiative about how to stake or create a node using a rock pie, using very little amounts of electricity, which was very cool. So very cool. So shout out to Marcus and Robert for that. The next thing were the Tangem cards. So the Tangem cards 
were these things right here. So, I don't know. These were sent to me by the Cardano Foundation. And I want to send these out to people. And I just haven't gotten around to it. But these are the Tangem cards. You can load up Ada on this card and uh, tap it like with NFC technology. And then you can spend it. But if you lose the card, you lose your funds. So, you have to have that card on hand at all times. Then you have the Meta Apps Plus Ada crypto card, which was accepted at over 30,000 retail locations in South Korea. And another big thing that happened in April was Charles Hoskinson did a review or an interview on Cheddar, which was a channel on the New York Stock Exchange. So I thought that was good publicity. I know. I mean, he's been on the Cardano Effect podcast before. Cardano Effect podcast is big, but I feel like the New York Stock Exchange is even bigger. So that was great. In May, Robert Kornacki released Sire. Uh, Sire was this whole thing about transaction surety, making sure that people are sending the correct amounts to the correct amounts of ADA to another address. So the uh, crypto addresses are long strings of, they're long alphanumeric strings. Sometimes it's difficult to verify whether the address is correct. So this would take up that process and make sure that people are sending it to the correct address. So I thought that was good. And if it's implemented into the Cardano blockchain in the future, I think that will provide some surety for the everyday consumer. The next thing was the free Plutus programming course on Udemy. So this was good. I took the class. Um, I believe they had a Marlowe class as well. And I think it got a lot of hits. So it was well presented. Now we're just waiting for Plutus to hit the mainnet, and that should be sometime next year. There was also the Seiza Blockchain Explorer. We're going to see the true power of Seiza after staking starts. So I'm assuming... I'm assuming a lot more information is going to be present, but it's a very cool visual blockchain explorer created by Emergo. We had Yodoi 1.7 release, which had a lot more features. I believe that, that included the send all feature, which was very helpful to those that had just dust in their wallets. Really appreciated that. Sometimes it's small little things that lead to big, big things. So this is what we need for mass adoption. Emptying out your coin jar, emptying out your ADA tip jar, or ADA coin jar, and moving that forward. The next thing we have is the Jormungandr test node. That was the first step in the testnet staking before testnet staking. So you could run a self node and create your entry into the Cardano staking ecosystem. So there were bugs, things were improved. Lots of different versions have been released since then. And now we're right around the corner to start staking, and it's very exciting. So it's come a long way. We had the YO Hackathon, which was in Wyoming, sponsored by, I believe, the Cardano Foundation. So the next thing after that was a second year anniversary. That was in Bulgaria. And that was this whole idea of bringing everyone together for the second anniversary of Cardano. It came out in 2017. It's been two years since then. A lot's been accomplished. A lot more to go. So they planted trees in an effort to move the project forward. It was more of a symbol thing than anything. We had the shallow network phase, which became available. Then we had the New Balance partnership, which was with the New Balance Omnis shoes or Omnis shoes. I've heard it's Omnis, like Ole Miss, but Omnis. So O-M-N-1-S. New Balance sponsors Kawhi Leonard. Kawhi Leonard was the MVP of last year's NBA Finals with the Toronto Raptors, and now he's in the LA, he's, he joined the LA Clippers. So this was a whole multi-marketing attempt to add identity to the shoes on the Cardano blockchain. So ultimately, you'd have a little card, the real chain card, and you'd be able to verify the authenticity of a certain shoe. It was a limited production run, but you have to start from somewhere, and it gained some press as well. Then we have the Cody-based partnership, which was the QR code for point of sale. So point of sale is especially important because if we're going to get into retail locations, that's what we need to move forward. Balance check. Balance check was the first balance check. You could move your ADA into a Daedalus or Yodoi approved snapshot ready address and check to see that the balance that you have on the test net was identical to the balance that you had on the mainnet, and it's the testnet rewards. It's a testnet data that you're going to be using to stake during the incentivized testnet, and all the rewards you receive will be credited back to your mainnet address. So those were the biggest events that I saw that happened this year. 
So this is not financial advice. And until the next video, thank you.